So getting closer, what's today? Mr. Thomas Johansson who is uh, riding with me. Hi there. <laughs> what's the date today, Thomas? Sorry? What's the, the date? The date today is uh, the 13th the of March. 13th of March and we're closing in uh, to visit M on the opening day 2022. Tomorrow it all starts. And uh, Thomas, who is uh, working with the Baltic Salmon Fund, it's your first M opening, isn't it? Yeah, okay. absolutely. But you fished the M before? Yeah, a few times. Yeah. More in the summertime with really low water, so this will be something new. Yeah. And today we're going to have a meeting with the Gustav Olsberg Foundation first. And then we are going to have some gin tonics in the fantastic spring weather. And here we come and we got Mr. Stena Helberg there. It's getting older and older every day. Like we all are. And we meet the river with about 70 cubic meters a second, which is quite a lot of water. And here we have the fantastic mansion. And we are going to stay in this little house here. It used to be Mr. Gustav Spar's home. And on the second floor we have the museum. And here we are. And welcome to the end, Thomas. Thank you. I'm rigged and ready for 22 opening day on the um, siesta. Fantastic morning. A few degrees below zero, 60 cubic meters, and uh, we're opening this season. Let's hope it'll be a good one for us. Bit of frost, bit of ice in the rings. And uh, starting the Sailor 14 with an intermediate sink tree and a heavy tip, and uh, of course a patagorma. I hooked this first fish down there. I think maybe it's a salmon kelp. We'll see. It's a bigger fish, longer fish. We'll have a look. And I'm right. First fish, but it's a kelp. And, uh, what is it? Maybe 90 something centimeters. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it's a one meter. It's a fish that's been maybe 10, 11 kilos. And uh, Hopefully it will go back to sea and spawn wrong way. And again the famous home pool on the M. And uh, 
below the wooden bridge there we start after 10 o'clock every day like in the old days when uh, the Ulfsborg family was living in the big house and I think they wanted some peace and quiet and also the fish needed some peace and quiet and I'm gonna start here now and we have some scientists here with the tagging program it's pretty interesting and we'll see if I catch something they will tag it and hopefully I can film it for you okay short line from the bank not too uh, fast uh, line and uh, maybe we'll see we got Thomas up on Snake Island and uh, he's probably in a better place than I am and uh, some journalists and a little bit of everything here today we'll see that spawn and this is perfect fish to to tag I would say it may be this is a fish to spawn maybe once before now the fish is transported up to the surgery So good, so what are you going to do here now? Yeah. Now we're going to tag this great trout with an acoustic tag. Uh, so we're first going to sedate it for a few minutes and then we're going to do the simple surgery. Put the tag in the, in the abdominal cavity of the fish. Then we're going to let it wake up and then we're going to release it. And uh, where do you have the transmitter? Uh, the transmitter is this one here. That's, millimeter. that's the this one, one. Yeah. and this is the one emitting acoustic signals that can then be detected by these acoustic receivers that we have in the river but also out in the coast how many in total are there uh, uh, of the receivers no of, uh, of detect detectors uh, we have uh, uh, quite a large array of receivers here in the river we have about 10 of them uh, and then out in the coast we have up to 90 uh, receivers so, so important we'll scientific information nice yes. i've been part of scientific projects in russia and in the <laughs> <Right>. u.s <laughs> and kamchatka and norway and keeps on going here before no yeah. no it's good so what do you have in here now uh, in here, yes, sedation. It's called MS22, which is similar to benzocaine that we okay. use for our roads, right? Okay. So they're going to be there for two minutes, maybe. Okay. And then when they stop being responsive, it must be a per perfect fish for the tagging, right? This has. Uh, this is a repeat spawner, I would say, that's spawned one or two times before, right? Yeah. Yeah, this looks like a perfect. There we go now. And in there you have water, right? Yeah. Regular water. So it starts to come back already when we do the surgery, kind of. And you so open look. like 15 millimeters? Yeah, something like it, yeah. And then we look so they keep on ventilating, as you can see now. Yeah. Then everything is cool. Yeah. And then, yep. Okay. 
This is what women should do that think their husbands cheat on them, right? <coughs> put a transmitter on that. Yeah, put a good tag. Yeah. <laughs> GPS tag. <laughs> you don't know Gustav is that you're the guy that's filming now actually stitch up a couple of uh, people that had their kidney transplant. Do you have done that? No. Uh, I have. Wow. My father's transplant surgeon or was. Ah. And um, I was a flight tire so. So you can do the stitching. <laughs> I did some stitching. People that doesn't know they were stitched up by a fly tire, not the surgeon. <laughs> I know it's pretty crazy, but that was fast and nice. And, then yeah. some and the stitching will now take the DNA here as well. Good. And the stitching yeah. will be there how long? That will be there for a couple of weeks before it is expelled by the fish. Yeah. So within a couple of months, you can hardly see the incision there. Oh, sorry. It's not going to be 82, it's only going to be 78. Okay. 80. 80. That's the largest okay. fish so far. <coughs> can you do some scale samples? Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then you put it in water again? Yeah, to wake up and then we're going to stick it to this. And just that you're putting down all the information there, eh? Right, so we can keep track of it. I'm going to follow the fish okay. back to the river here now. And here you can see your fish when he comes back. So it's all starting to find the, the balance. So we're so they... careful about holding them upstream, yeah. <laughs> upstream. But I want them to be away from the from the, from yeah. the sediment. So you see it's already coming back. Coming to swim. Yeah, fantastic. And this fish being transported uh, 200 meters. Yeah, to the tagging station. Partly on land, all right? Yep. So, but when it's cold in the water as now, then it's fine. Yeah. Uh, they handle this nicely. But it's uh, in also interesting because this is what we say, and uh, those of you who, who, those of us that are for catch and release, and um, as long as you do things right, um, don't touch gills and, and important parts of the fish then they can they can take quite a bit of handling especially on the cold water right yeah I mean they are tough right they are <laughs> evolved to, to, to cope with predation and, and all kinds of, of stress but so when when the water is warm that's when you have problem with tagging and the same is with catch release yeah so that's and you say uh, it starts changing about 15 16 Celsius yeah at that temperature we start to be careful and maybe even lower you can see or feel that they are a little bit more stressed okay so I'll, optimally i would say we do this when it's under 12. under 12 yeah and i mean that's for trout if you do it for other species perch and pike and stuff then you can do it a little bit warmer of course hmm. um, but generally all fish we try to do it as cold as possible hmm. Good to see it's a fish without any marks. Been uh, having a good winter in the river. And um, most of these fish, to my knowledge, come back the year after to spawn again. They spawn every year, which is quite amazing.
Gustav Osbar was in many ways a trendsetter and a pioneer, both in fly fishing, fly tying, introducing this fly fishing for salmon and sea trout to the Scandinavian people, but also in conservation. He saw the problems and he, fight, he was fighting for the fish. Not the fishermen in the center, but the fish, the sea trout. The old tagging was brutal and perhaps some of the fish died, but it gave some interesting knowledge about M's unique stock of big sea trout. These mysterious, broad back, fantastic fish. Well, let's see if I can explain this to you. I was right down here and I cast it over. You see, there's like two streams with some slack of water in the middle, and the fish will hold in the slack of water. But you need to cast across the other one to get your fly down there. And uh, this fish just nailed it. And uh, I'm gonna try it again, see? A bit cold here now with the wind coming in, so I'll jump into my uh, my down jacket, get some peace and quiet, and warm. And I think we have Mr. Norling on the other side too. The sun is disappearing, and it's not disappearing, but it's getting lower and it's getting colder and colder and uh, I guess the water temperature hasn't started dropping yet so it's still possible to catch a fish or two um, I'll make a few casts in Anka Corona too we'll see it's good to be back here And another day is here, and as you can see, it's not as pleasant weather as it was yesterday. And we have fog on the river, and probably the sun will break through. I'm gonna start here, I think, and see if I can find one here. And. Uh, Thomas on the other side <laughs> and after a wet evening last night we uh, decided not to fish before 10 meaning we're getting old and lazy but uh, it looks like it was the right morning to stay in bed so in the fog we fit Meet the old man. <laughs> One misty <the> morning. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, Okan, what do you think about this opening uh, year? It was better than last year. Uh, at least there were some old fish left, some mm. uh, kelts, salmon kelts. Um, not so many small, fresher fish mm. as uh, last year, but they have survived. There's not many of them, but it's at least it's better than last year now. You had a good, good, good little session in Ankakron last night. Yeah. Yes, I started off with a up in Mill, uh -huh. big hybrid. Another uh -huh. uh, time of the year would have been a fresh salmon, <laughs> but a fresh, silvery, but very long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So cold, misty morning. And I uh, hope you join us here for the May fishing when these uh, big salmon come in, but... We'll see. We'll otherwise see. we'll be here in September again. Mm. Getting older. Years are passing. I, 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 I did, I've done some wading. Oh, so wasn't, I'm too old for that shit now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I managed to stay alive. Yeah. I'm walking around here with my near near prints, just trying to save my balls in this cold water. <laughs> <laughs> I put on my ordinary waders because uh, the near prints they take too much water pressure on the legs. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so Not the they, 
not that strong anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I mean those. <laughs> They've been seeing the best days, but you know, yeah. Okay, my friend, you're leaving home? Yes, packing up with Thomas, you are yeah. home. Yeah, Thomas needs to be at the airport. I picked him, you leave him. And uh, it feels what, that I'm not going to miss much. What do you think about Thomas? He's been all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he caught some small fish, but uh, you know, he's a great guy. Old man rules. Yeah, good, good. Um, yeah, but he's uh, he's one of our heroes that save our salmon, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah he, he deserves to be. Yeah, he deserves to be. He's doing a good job. Okay, my friend. See you soon. All the best. Somewhere. Oh, we're in lock here and Thomas came up. First I had one and lost one. And now Thomas playing on here. Doesn't seem to be the biggest fish in the river, but... That's a baby. I don't know about that, Thomas. I don't know what to say when you show a friend and good person a good place. And he's on the babies. Find Kent Okanson. Yes. So, yep. 2022 Kent. Yes. Opening days. Uh, what do you think about it? So far, I'm I'm pleased with the with the catches. It was about expected. We had, as we, I mentioned earlier in your interviews, that uh, in 2020 we had a, a serious disease problem with the fish, and we lost a great deal of the stock and uh, it will take a couple of years to recover from that. We are in this recovery process at the moment mm. and uh, so far it looks like it's it's recovering as expected. Mm. We are not quite fully recovered yet but uh, on our way. Mm. Yeah, it's good. It's been about salmon and trout, some um, mostly smaller trout but some good trout caught yeah. too. Yes. Um, but uh, I'm a bit worried about uh, what's happening outside in the archipelago and uh, in Kalmarsund here. Um, there's uh, quite a few fish that's M fish that's taken out there and uh, you think this is a problem for us? Do we need uh, less killing out in sea to have this recover fast? It will help definitely, yes, of course. The more fish that can survive and spawn, the better and the faster we can recover the stock. But it's, it's, a, it's a process between authorities and other interests in the fishing outside, which we have not fully control of. Mm. But we try our best to influence uh, the governments and the authorities in the right direction. And this is uh, ongoing work that we keep on keep on doing all the time mm. it's a slow process but uh, but I, I think we will get there eventually and now we got uh, rid of the salmon fishing on the mixed stocks in the southern Baltic here. yes this will be interesting to see how this uh, affects our salmon run here in a couple of months probably will be beneficial 
mm. the worrying thing about the salmon and some to some extent also the sea trout in the Baltic is the big trawling uh, ships that are in the Baltic at the moment trying to to empty it from herring which is the number one food source for salmon mm. and also for the bigger sea trout. And we both know where uh, all these um, fish go, they go to uh, um, our biggest enemy, the fish farming industry. Yes, they need the protein. They need the protein and they troll and empty our seas uh, to produce um, this uh, disgusting farmed Norwegian salmon. Yes. So, so this needs to be stopped, hopefully sooner the, the sooner the better. Mm, yeah. You think the trolling in the Baltic is the biggest problem we have now to the stocks here? Yes, I would say so. Yeah. I would agree to you, mm. with you. And um, it's spreading like a disease worldwide, the fish farming uh, industry's negative impact yes, on the world. The industry is growing also very fast. So this is a problem that is, is going in, uh, in the wrong direction. It's going to get worse if we don't stop it in time. So Mr. Okanson, do you eat farmed Norwegian fish? No, never. No, no. that's good. And you try to influence your friends too, I hope. Yeah. That's good. So that's a good message with this little interview. <laughs> <laughs> Keep away from the farm fish. Yeah, that's right. Okay, thank you, Kent. I will go and uh, see if I can catch myself another fish. You should do that, Michael. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, packing up and um, what should, should I say? Been okay, but I landed seven, eight fish. Biggest trout, 80 centimeters. Yes, one little fresh one. And uh, always fun, but tricky. And um, to be honest with you, there should be more fish than it is. But um, uh, we have to keep on fighting and to preserve this unique stock of what I think is the biggest sea trout in the world. M1 is a special place. I've fished it now for 40 years. The tradition and the biggest genuine sea run browns in the whole world is what makes it so special. But the number of fish is way down. Maybe there are only 10% or less left. The Baltic is heavily polluted. It's been overfished for food. And now the ruthless fish farming industry is trolling it for protein. So what can we do? We can fish catch and release and fight the industry in all ways possible. We can fight for free passage for the fish the only thing we cannot do is to give up. It's our responsibility that unique sea trout will survive our watch. If you want to help, please send to Gustav Ulsberg Foundation a contribution. Big or small, all contributions help us in a fight for this fantastic river and for the biggest sea trout there is in the world.